جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والأخيار من صحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حتى إذا حضر أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون صدق الله العلي العظيم The best gift and present that we can extend to our own selves on the new year, <clears throat> the beginning of the new year, is self-evaluation and self-examination of our past record during the past year. <clears throat> what did we achieve? <clears throat> How far did we go? What did we do? We have to have some reflection on these questions. We have to look at ourselves. Where do we stand today? Are we heading into the right direction in our life? Hasibu anfusakum. One of the best ahadith that have been narrated by our Imams is this hadith, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Hold yourself accountable. Accountability. Do the accountability to your own self before they hold you accountable. You take the initiative. Hasibu. Speak to yourself. Examine yourself. Your achievements, your deeds, your direction in this life. قبل أن تحاسبوا before it is too late and then they hold you accountable وزنوها and evaluate yourself قبل أن توزنوا before someone else and that someone else is on the day of judgment before they tell us that it is now too late you cannot fix it so you have to do this process to yourself every day لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُحَاسِبْ نَفْسَهُ كُلَّ يَوْمِ He's not of us. He does not belong to our tradition, the tradition of Ahlul Bayt. He or she who does not do muhasaba, accountability to his or to his or her own self every, every day. Not once a week. Every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ When death arrives to 
Some of them, one of them, قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ He starts begging. Please give me another chance. I did not do good. Now I woke up. This is a wake-up call for me. I was unaware of this. I was busy with my life. I was busy with my engagements. I was busy with friends and family members and this dunya. قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي Perchance I can fix the damage I did. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتْ Things that I abandoned and I did not pay attention to them. Maybe I can fix them again. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتْ The answer comes to him. كَلَّا نَيْ إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ This is a wishing. This is wishful thinking. A wish that we cannot grant him. كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا And now you embarked on a journey that is endless. There is no return. Have you seen no return policy? I was told that these speakers just five minutes ago, no return. You buy them, you are stuck with them. No return. There is no return. When Israel comes, there is no U-turn. There is no U-turn. At least here, before you arrive into Mexico, they tell you this is the last exit before the international border. You can make a U-turn. But Israel does not give you this warning. كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ Behind them بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُ So we have to think of what we have achieved and what we did not achieve. What should we do? New Year's resolution, you all know about them. Even the kids, I was listening to them asking each other, what do you have for New Year resolution? People think of getting into shape, losing weight, you know, upgrading their iPhone, you know, remodeling the kitchen, you know, talking to a divorce attorney this year. And this and that, it's all about Hayatul Dunya. It's all about Hayatul Dunya. How many of us we thought that, am I prepared for my next life? People, sometimes people complain, they say, say it, don't mention death. I don't want to hear about death. It's not about death. It's about life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about death, he says, this is life. This is a transferal. Transferal from here into there. Tabaraka alladhi biyadihi al-mulku wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Alladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal hayat. He created death and life. So after death, we have life. It is not death. It is not death. There is another life waiting for us. We have to think about it. The kids, the teenagers, they think about their marital life. When they graduate, when they get a job, the new life. For us too, it's a new life. After that, this death, there is another life, a permanent life, an eternal life. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا We have to think about it. This life... It's very fleeting. Did you feel 2014? How many of you really felt it? At the end of the year, this is the discussion among us. This is the discussion among all people. We realize in December, we realize that life is too short, too fast, too fleeting, because we did not feel it. 2014 was fast. 2015 is going to be faster, believe me. 2016 is going to be even faster and faster and faster. This is the reality of this life. This is what Allah describes this life. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعِ This lower life is nothing, is a fleeting and passing and too short compared to the akhirah. Mata' one of the meanings of mata' is that it moves very fast. Because you are not meant to stay here. You are meant to move. To get it transferred into another life. To be prepared for another life. Have we prepared for that one? Have we planned? Many people plan for their retirement. Have we planned for the real retirement? Were we going to leave everything behind and move into that one? This is what we have. This is the, our New Year's 
resolution. This is the real resolution. If we have missed, then we have to make it up now before it is too late. Ya atwal al anbiya umran. Jibreel asked Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh who survived 1600 years. The time of his preaching and his ministry was 950 years. فَلَبِثَ فِي قَوْمِهِ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا He worked 950 years, but he lived 1600 years. So Jibreel asked him, O oh, the longest serving prophet of God, يَا أَطْوَلَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ عُمْرًا No one lived the life that you, the age that you lived. كَيْفَ وَجَدْتَ الدُّنْيَا Tell me, describe this dunya for me. He said, وَجَدْتُهَا وَجَدْتُهَا كَدَارٍ لَهَا بَابَانْ دَخَلْتُ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَخَرَجْتُ مِنَ الْأَخْرِ I saw this life to be like a house that has two gates, one entrance and one exit. I passed through this life. I did not stay in it. He lived 1600 years. And he said, I passed through it. I passed through this life. We are aging now. We are growing physically. But are we also growing spiritually and mentally? Or we are stuck in a perpetual infancy? Are we growing? Are we thinking about the next chapter of our life? This is a question that we all have to ask ourselves. What did I do for my future? For my next chapter? What did I do? Have I prepared something? وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مَنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ Allah says, if you leave behind, you don't find it. But when you send it ahead of you, تُقَدِّمُوا When you advance and send it ahead of you, you will find it. تَجِدُوهُ Let's work. Let's work hard. I remember a story I read many years ago of Alfred Nobel, the guy who presented Nobel Peace Prize and other, other prizes also. But the main one is, is the noble one, is the Peace Prize. This guy, you know, he, he invented dynamite explosives. So he had a brother with the same last name who died in Sweden. And Alfred, the following day, read the obituary of his own brother, in the newspaper, but they thought, mistakenly, they thought that Alfred himself died, the one who invented the dynamite. So the, in the obituary, in the newspaper, in the eulogy, it was very bad about him. They said, this man is bad. He left a very bad and evil legacy. He invented dynamite, which is causing death, destruction, destroying people's life, people's homes, people's properties. So the obituary was very bad. When he read it, it was about him. They thought that he died. He became very sad. It shook his foundation. He said, this is how people are going to remember me? This is how people are going to remember me? I made a fortune. I made so much money. I have a great brain. This is how people are going to remember me? With evil, with destruction? So he decided. He said, this is a wake-up call for me. This is a wake-up call for me. It is good that they made this mistake in the newspaper. He thanked the, uh, the newspaper. He called them the following day. He said, listen, I am Alfred. I am still you know, alive. They said, oh, we apologize. He said, no, don't apologize to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. You sent me a very powerful wake-up call. I have to salvage the remaining of my life. I don't want to, buy, to, to die, to leave this life with this terrible legacy, to destroy people's life. So he decided to promote peace, to promote compassion, love, harmony. And this is how he dedicated his wealth, his entire wealth, to promote peace and reconciliation among the people in the world by dedicating his wealth to give a prize every year for those who are peacemakers. Of course, not all those who receive this prize, unfortunately, are peacemakers. Some of them are, if you look at the history of those who received it, some of them are warmongers too. 
But this is politics, unfortunately. And I, am, I know Alford is not happy with this decision. I am sure he's not happy. But some of them who received it, they are peacemakers. So he decided to change his life. We have to change our life. Let's imagine if they write an obituary about us today in the newspaper, or a letter about us, or someone who's genuine, a friend, a family member, someone who knows me very well, he would write a paragraph about me. What did Mustafa al-Qazwini do? Did he change people's life into better, or he destroyed people's life? Let's ask this question. Let's ask this question. When we do Salat al-Janazah, this is what the dua we, we recite. Allahumma inna la na'lamu minhu illa khayra. Allahumma in kana muhsinan fazid fi ihsana. If he has done good, Allah increase his goodness. So let's think about ourselves. If we are doing good, if we think we are doing good, let's increase this goodness. Let's intensify it. And if we do bad, وَإِنْ كَانَ مُسِيئًا فَتَجَاوَزِ اللَّهُمَّ عَنَّ If we are doing bad, then there is room for recovery still. Still we have room for recovery. Still. Still Allah can embrace us with His mercy. We can change ourselves, change our relationship with people that we live with. Bring some hope, some stability, some peace into their life. We can change it. Before before it is too late. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqq wa tawasaw bil-sabr wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ahli baytih al-tayyibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad Allahumma Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Nahmaduhu wa nusabbihuhu wa nuqaddisuh ala alaihi wa na'amaih wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa anna sayyidana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh arsalahu bil huda wa deen al-haqq li yudhirahu ala al-deen kullah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa tarahham ala muhammadin wa ala muhammad كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأحبته وأهل بيته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي المذنبة المقصرة بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره روي في الحديث الشريف أن لقمان الحكيم أوصى ابنه بأربع وصايا I mentioned this hadith a couple of weeks ago but I did not finish it some people asked me to finish the rest of the, the hadith Luqman, the wise man, admonished his own son. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهْوَ يَعِضُهُ He said to him, son, if you are seeking falah, success and happiness and salvation in this dunya, I have four points for you. Listen to them, practice them in your life. I'm a man who is old who experienced this life for so many decades. And I want to pass and bequeath my happiness to you, the lessons that I learned to you. So listen to me and 
uphold to these four points. I mentioned two of them two weeks ago, but I would repeat them. He said to him, Bunay, لِيَكُنْ سَحْمُكَ لِلدُّنْيَا بِقَدَرِ بَقَائِكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا let your share of this dunya be according to your staying in this dunya. Don't take more than that. Don't take more than that. Take what you need. What you don't need is going to be an overload. It's going to be a burden on you. A burden on you. Imam al-Hasan, alayhi salatu was salam, in a beautiful hadith, he says, whatever you take, the extra you take, you're going to be responsible for it on that life. Even if you accumulate from a pure and halal, 100% halal, they hold you accountable. They hold you accountable. If you accumulate haram, iqab, there is punishment. A money that you don't know whether it is really halal or haram, shubha, this is shubha, uncertainty. Uncertainty. There is a rebuke and reprimand. They tell you this was shubha. If there is a cup and you don't know whether in this cup there is poison or not, would you drink it? If there is one in a million possibility that this cup has been poisoned, would you touch it? You don't touch it. You stay away from it. The same thing with the dunya. With the money of the dunya, you have to stay away from it. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ لَا تَجْمَعُ مِنَ الْمَالِ شَيْئًا فَوْقَ قُوتِكَ إِلَّا كُنْتَ فِيهِ خَازِنًا لِغَيْرِكَ Any money that you accumulate above and beyond what you need, you are accumulating that for others, not for yourself. You, the Imam says, you get exhausted and tired and work hard to make the money. Others, they enjoy it. On the Day of Judgment, you will be responsible. You will be responsible even for the earth, the earth, the inheritance that you leave behind. If your inheritors, they mishandle it, you will be responsible for that. You will be responsible for that. Although you didn't use it, someone else used it. Used it. But you were the source of giving it. Passing it to them, you are responsible. So take what you need. Above that, it's a burden. Believe me, it's a burden. I gave this example the other day, that when we fly with United, with American, they allow you only one carry-on. If you have extra luggage, you have to pay. It's not free. You have to pay. So if you, want, if you don't want to pay penalty, then carry only one small bag with you, the carry-on. Don't take more than that with you. The second he said to him, وَلْيَكُنْ زَادُكْ زَادُكْ your provision. As Zad, the traveler, what the traveler carries with him. It's called in Arabic Zad. Zad, the provision. وَلْيَكُنْ زَادُكَ لِلْآخِرَةِ بِقَدَرِ بَقَائِكَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ According to your stay in the Akhirah. How, how long you want to stay in the Akhirah? How long are you going to stay? 10 years, and then we change, and then they bring us back here, no? خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ As long as there is cosmos system, we are staying there. There is no expiration. And by the way, we don't age there, huh? Here, here some people don't remind them of, of their birthday, huh? They get irritated, <laughs> especially when they... Women don't at all, at all, even if they are in their 20, 20s. Men, when they pass 50s, don't tell them happy birthday. Painful reminder. In the Akhirah, there is no aging, alhamdulillah. You are always fresh, always ready, alhamdulillah, energetic, full of energy. So take for the Akhirah according to your need in the Akhirah. And we need a lot in the Akhirah. We are going to stay forever. So take as much as you can from this dunya for the akhirah. This is number three. Let your service to God and your worshiping of God Let your worshiping of God be according to your need to God. How much do you need God? How much do we need Him? 
We only need him and we need no one else. Ya ayyuhan nasu antum al-fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hamd. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need him every second. There is no day that we feel that today we need him less than yesterday. Day by day we need him more and more and more. And Amir al-Mu'mineen says those who are the most wealthy, the most influential, the most powerful in the society, they need God more than those who are poor and needy. They need him more. So let's worship him and obey him according to our need to him. And number four, he said to his son, وَلْتَكُنْ وَقَاحَتُكَ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ Let your audacity and recklessness, waqaha, in disobeying God, بِقَدَرِ تَحَمُّلِكَ لِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ According to your capacity in receiving his punishment. Do you bear the punishment? Amir al-Mu'mineen says in dua, كُمَيْلْ وَهَذَا مَا لَا تَقُومُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ the heaven and the earth cannot stand for your anger and your wrath. The Quran says, إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِعُوا لَهَا سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا When the fire observes them from a far distance, observes the guilty ones, the criminals, سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا They hear the roaring and the vehement raging of this fire, تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا وَإِذَا أُلْقُوا مِنْهَا مَكَانًا ضَيِّقًا When they are cast into the fire, into a narrow place in the fire, مُقَرَّنِينَ handcuffed, دَعَوْ هُنَا لِكَ ثُبُورًا دَعَوْ هُنَا لِكَ ثُبُورًا They call for destruction. Oh God, take my soul, take my life. I can't bear this pain here. دَعَوْ هُنَا لِكَ ثُبُورًا Allah says to them, لا تدعوا اليوم ثبورا واحدا وادعوا ثبورا كثيرا One call for destruction is not enough. As much as you can call for destruction. They can't stay. We can't bear Allah's punishment. So let's not disobey Him. Let's remember that there are consequences for what we say or what we do in this life for our acts and nothing can escape Allah's observance. Nothing. Allah can see. ما يلفظ من قول ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. A friend one time told me. He said, "Said, I made a mistake in my life. I'm not going to repeat this mistake forever until I die." I said, "What is it?" He said, "I cheated on IRS, and they came after me very harsh and very hard." And they taught me a lesson that for the rest of my life, I'm not going to forget it. I'm not going to forget this. And I'm not going to cheat on them again. IRS made of people like me and you. But the fire is made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one can cheat on Allah. And Allah comes after us. If we do not repent, Allah's system is stricter than IRS and than the government. And he comes after us. So let's observe him. Observe him in what we say. As we age and grow, when we speak, we have to think about it. We have to reflect about the consequences of my speech, my comment, with my family, with my friends and the community. Let's think about these four points and let's make them our New Year resolution, inshallah, for all of us.